Welcome to Carol and Gary's Sea America Tour. Hello again, everyone. On Thursday, May 27th, Carol, Jasper, and I packed up again and drove to Hartford, Connecticut. This was another long drive, leaving from south of Dover, Delaware, crossing into New Jersey, and then driving diagonally across New Jersey on the New York Turnpike. Eventually, we crossed the Hudson River on the George Washington Bridge into New York State. The toll to cross the George Washington Bridge was $16 per car, but for motorhomes pulling a car, the cost was $88. And they only took cash. We scrambled to come up with $88 in cash. We apparently took a wrong turn on Interstate 87 in New York State and ended up on the 12 and a half mile long Sprain Brook Parkway. I missed this sign saying that there was low bridges ahead. I also missed this writing on the road. A couple of minutes later, this guy who was trying frantically to get my attention caught my eye. And then I saw this sign. But back on the interstate, we soon completed our drive to Hartford. Connecticut is the 40th state that Carol and I have visited together. On Friday, May 28th, Carol and I visited Samuel Clemens' home in Hartford but unfortunately no pictures were allowed inside of the home during our tour. Samuel Clements wrote several books under the pen name of Mark Twain. He took on this pen name after piloting a riverboat on the Mississippi River. You have probably heard of and maybe even read some of the more popular stories, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer or The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Samuel Clements' stories were based on his childhood while growing up in Hannibal, Missouri. In 1873, he moved his family to Hartford, Connecticut, where he arranged to build this three-story house. He lived in this house with his wife Olivia and three daughters from 1874 to 1891. During that time, he wrote many of his classic novels. On our way back to the motorhome after our house tour, it started to rain. It was raining hard enough at bedtime that Jasper refused to go out for his final potty run of the night. It rained through the night on Friday and then all day on Saturday. It continued raining Saturday night and then all day again on Sunday. The rain continued through the night on Sunday and then finally began to clear Monday morning. This was never a heavy rain, but the Monday morning news said that we had received just under three inches. With the weather clearing, we decided to take Jasper to see the nearby Comstock Covered Bridge on Monday afternoon. Originally built in 1785, this 80-foot-long bridge was a simple uncovered structure used to permit traffic to pass over the Salmon River between East Hampton and Middleton. In 1840, the bridge was upgraded to allow more traffic, and then in 1873, the bridge was covered using the Howe Truss system. Unfortunately, the structure wasn't originally engineered to support the weight of the cover, so in the 1930s, the Civilian Conservation Corps completely rehabilitated the bridge, utilizing concrete reinforcements. By the 1970s, the bridge was beginning to deteriorate, so steel was added for support. In 2012, after being struck by lightning, the bridge was rebuilt using 50% of the original wood in an effort to preserve the historical integrity of the bridge. Today, the Comstock Covered Bridge, named after the first postmaster of East Hampton, is one of only three covered bridges remaining in the state of Connecticut. After seeing the covered bridge, we followed a trail along the Salmon River for approximately a mile.
Well, unfortunately, due to all of the rain, we didn't get a chance to do much sightseeing this week, but we will be leaving on Thursday for another stop in Connecticut. If you like this video but have not yet subscribed, please do so to be notified of future videos, and as always, feel free to share with your friends. Thanks for watching!